But I love the quote in the book, you compare our vision to architecture, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you talk about how if you plan it with a pencil, mm -hmm. you can weld it with steel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's what surprised me about you, because um, you're so gifted. Um, there's, there's no denying that. When I saw the systems, the structures, the thought process that goes behind who you are, it almost made me depressed, because <laughs> I realized, oh, this isn't magic. Um, you may have stumbled into it from one perspective, but from another perspective, it was strategic stumbling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At least you were trying to do something. I, let, let me interrupt you. It, it, you. You stumble into it. God gives you an opportunity, and what you do with that opportunity is your gift to him. Got it. You understand? When God gives you an opportunity, instead of just jumping on the opportunity, you're supposed to see what it can be. I tell them all the time, you know, God, God never made not one table. Yeah, I love this. Do this. This is, this, God, is, God, this is really… God never made a chair. In all of his years of being God, he's never made a chair. He's never made a table. He just made a tree, and the rest of it was up to us. <laughs> right. When God hands you a tree, imagine a table, a chair, imagine a wall in a room, imagine a log cabin, imagine what it can be, imagine what it can be, imagine what it can be. God of mercy. If he hands you a child, imagine what it can be. If he hands you a spouse, imagine what he can be. Oh God, I feel his power. I feel his presence. I was out. Your church is rowdy. They shout and stuff. A little uh, bit. I didn't know that. I was out. Uh, <laughs> what did you think we did over here? <laughs> this is Elevation Church. We love you. To see him at University City. Look at University City. What's up, University City? Hello. So I'm in South Africa and I'm on a safari and I, I'm 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 really like tripping off of this safari and I'm out here with all of these big animals and stuff and I notice the elephant is moving around. The elephant is strong and he's big and it's tough and his power is in his weight and he throws his weight around and he throws his weight around. What can you do with him because he's so big? God made him big as a defense. The lion roars. When he roars, everybody is almost paralyzed in fear because God gave him his roar as his defense. The cheetah says, I can't roar like that, but I can run like the wind. The cheetah he goes running through the woods because God made him able to run because that's his defense. The eagle spreads his wings and soars into the air and says, I can't run, but I can fly. God let the eagle be able to fly because it was his defense. And I'm walking around in the jungle and I said, well, Lord, I can't fly like the eagle. I can't run like the cheetah. I can't roar like the lion and I can't throw my weight around like the elephant. What did you give man as his defense in, in the whole ecosystem of human, of, of life force? What did you give me? He said, I gave you a brain. Your brain is your defense. That's why God doesn't make chairs. He only brings it halfway. Mm -hmm. And then lets you imagine, collaboration, create, develop. Do you understand what I'm saying? The problem with church people is that we are taught that God makes furniture. So we pray and 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 pray. Oh, I need a table. I need a table. God, give me a table. Give me a table, Jesus. Just one table, Lord. If you give me a table, I'll praise you. If you give me a table, I'll serve you. And God says, I don't do that. I make trees. I want you to look around your life for trees, not tables. 
God's going to bring it within the reach of your mind and your creativity is going to take it the, the rest of the way and it's going to turn into apps and it's going to turn into Apple phones and it's going to turn into computers and it's going to turn into satellite systems in the heavens. Look at what all we were able to do. No other, no other creature, no other species has sent satellites up into the air, created smartphones. Look at what we did with our head. Why are we in church not using our head? I don't understand it. <laughs> you know, in my neighborhood, they got this song, you know, that the young people used to sing and state it now, but they say, shake your money maker. Yeah. And they go to, uh, uh, to twerking, you know. Yeah, they, yeah. yeah. I, I ain't gonna show you. I got a couple of moves I ain't gonna show you, but they, they, they go to twerk. And I told my church, the next time you hear that song, play your money maker, don't shake nothing down here. Shake this up here. As a man thinketh, so is he. When you start talking about the type of strategic that I am, God gives me raw elements and I stare at them. I stare at what I've been given, like I stare at a text. Mm -hmm. I preach the way I do, not because of what I know about the text, how long I stare at the text. I just stare at it and stare at it, stare at it. I look at my life, I look at my wife, I look at my kids, I look at my age, I look at my stage, I look at my influence, and I stare at it and imagine what it could be. And I build my strategy from my stare. Yes. Yes. See, I don't have time to be gazing at what you're doing. <laughs> you understand? But that's not going to help me. That's none of my business. God bless you. If I can help you, you know I will. But I'm not over in your business. I'm never going to be over in your business because every time you turn around, I'm staring at mine. For this season, for this stage, for this age in my life, what could I do with what I have left? Yes, yes, yes. Your miracle is never in what you lost. It is always in what you have left. Yes. If you're down to a handful of meal, that's all you need. If you're down to two fish and five loaves of bread, that's all you need. And so when you start looking at what you have left, stop grieving over what you lost. Mm -hmm. Because if you needed it, you wouldn't have lost it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it might only be a pot of oil, but if it's left, the miracle's always in what's left. So what can you imagine with that? That woman, that pot of oil would have never done anything if you didn't pour it. It would pour as long as there was capacity to receive. Yeah. So when you start talking about being strategic, and this is gonna help you a whole lot. For me, once I envision where I'm going, then I can tell what I don't need. Talk about that. You see, if I packed to go on this trip based on where I was going, I checked the weather, I looked at the places I was going to speak, and everything that I thought I would need for where I was going, I put in the bag. And anything, I, I didn't pack no swimming trunks because I figured I wasn't going to need them. Why do I load down my bag with things I don't need? Okay. I want, I want to circumspectly, with great precision, tailor my life down to the things that are necessary to get me where I'm trying to go. 